Hi, everyone. Hi, Anne, and thank you so much for this invitation and for your introduction, and congratulations to Christina for this beautiful presentation. Um, my name is Mariangela. I'm part of the duo Nuscom Production. And my name is Philip Cartelli, and I'm the other half of the duo. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to kind of talk for the first part um, about the first iteration of this project that, that we're both going to be discussing today, and then I'll let Mariangela uh, talk a little bit, and then we obviously both available for questions. Um, so we did want to thank Anne for, uh, and Stefan for this invitation, and, and also to thank uh, specifically Anne for her support of, of this specific project um, from its early stages, in, uh, which, which was a residency in 2017 in, in Gozo in, in Arb. Um, and we don't have um, kind of a slide presentation, so you'll just have to look at us for most of the time. Um, but we do have two short video clips that we'll share with you a little bit later. Um, so this, um, this residency uh, was, was meant to be a collaborative residency, and the collaboration that we had initially proposed was uh, one between ourselves, between primary school students at the, the ARG primary school, um, and also members of the, the refugee migrant collective Spark 15, uh, which is based in Malta. Um, so some of you who are, who are Maltese maybe know of this, this, this group. Um, as part of the project, we, we wanted to ask the, the students specifically to, to appropriate and to translate the, the migrants' narratives. And um, over, overall, the, the project was, um, and, it, and it kind of fits really nicely in with um, today's topic, uh, the, the goal of the project was to use storytelling to, to create and, and convey narratives and to construct connections across uh, space and time. So while we were doing this, we were, um, we were trying to keep in mind uh, the, our, our general desire, which generally pertains when we work together as this duo, to, to allow different uh, storytellers and makers, so in this case, the students, migrants, and ourselves, to participate in the definition and the redefinition of place and space. In this case, we were thinking specifically of the identity of, of Gozo, um, but also of Malta and, and of the larger Mediterranean. So when we do, um, we both work separately as, as artists and filmmakers. When we work together, our work is more specifically concerned with the exploration and creation of new itineraries in and around the Mediterranean. I, I am from the United States uh, originally, which is where we live right now. We live in New York, uh, and Maria Angela is, um, is Italian. So, um, in the process, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do when we work with groups of people in this place, in this case, the, the, the groups of students in the primary school and, um, and the, the, the refugees was to consider the, also the contested nature of these different uh, identity categories. So uh, uh, Gozo, Malta, the Mediterranean, Italian, different areas in the Mediterranean, um, and, and the role of these identi identity categories in, um, in the creation of senses of belonging, or more often than not, senses of uh, exclusion. So we were trying to kind of explore these, these competing uh, dynamics through our work and through our uh, collaboration and creative production with these different groups of people. I'm just gonna break down very briefly kind of the steps of this process that we went through, and then I'll share with you uh, a small clip from the first video that we produced. So we actually produced two videos in this project. One was more uh, specifically rooted in the, the residency itself, and the second one was uh, something that we created afterwards, which Mariangela will discuss. So in the first uh, step of the project, we were based in, um, in Gozo, in Arb, and so we don't have a, a map to share with you, but for those who aren't familiar with Malta and maybe remember Christina's map from <laughs> 15 minutes ago, uh, Arb is maybe as far as you can get towards the, the periphery in Malta, so it's in the, the far western coast of, of Gozo, which is the northern uh, island above Malta. Um, we realized once we arrived in Malta that it was going to be difficult for us to actually bring the migrants and the children closer together. We, we thought that the relatively close distance would allow this, but it wasn't possible. Um, and so we ended up using video, uh, film, which is our primary um, medium that we work with to, to bring them together. So we, in Valletta, we recorded um, a series of videos with the, um, two of the refugees to the migrants in question, one of whom was originally from Palestine, the other one uh, originally from Eritrea describing their, um, their personal narratives, describing their, their processes of, of, of leaving the places they were from and coming to Malta, um, their reception in Malta, their acclimation to society. We took these videos then and brought them back to Gozo, shared them with the students. And at the same time, we were doing these bi-weekly workshops with the students where we, um, we shared these videos, but we also shared with them other film and video work, uh, other creative work, 
we ask them to um, reimagine their identities and their surroundings from a, a more creative perspective um, and, and to kind of undergo a process of defamiliarization wherein they, they question even their, their own senses of belonging to the place that they, that they consider to be home for the most part. Um, after this process, we asked the students and kind of worked with them since they were very young uh, to, um, to develop a, a kind of collective or composite narrative that was both based on the narratives that they had been exposed to from the, the migrants um, and also kind of created from their own personal experiences. There were, there, were more, there were elements of that narrative that were more very obviously from the imagination of a seven-year-old child. Um, they in their narratives, they were departing from a land where they can no longer live due to uh, war or, or, or political problems or violence, uh, getting on a boat. Uh, they didn't actually get on a boat, but that was the, we made it seem like they were on a boat. <laughs> and then arriving in another land, um, both of those lands, the land of departure and the land of arrival were very obviously Gozo and Malta. And so um, there was this also kind of sense of circularity that we wanted to, um, emphasize in this is maybe on a more subtle level, maybe not something that the students all grasped, um, but there was, we were, we were interested even at this stage in, in alluding to um, the identity of Malta as both uh, a side of uh, emigration and of immigration. So to, just to, to kind of have, a, uh, uh, to emphasize this sense that some of the students had had families who had also kind of been through processes of, of migration themselves, maybe going to other um, parts of the Mediterranean, maybe going to the UK, maybe going to Italy, maybe going to Australia. Uh, so these, this was something that we wanted to emphasize in this project. We filmed the students' um, performances or the reenactments and mixed these with other footage that we'd recorded around Goza and Malta. We were there for about three weeks, I think. And, uh, and then when we went back to Italy, where we were then based, we, uh, we, we put together a short video that was more kind of uh, based on this specific experience. Um, and we were able to bring that back uh, a few weeks later, uh, share that with the students. We also shared it with the, our, our refugee collaborators. And, and that film uh, screened later in 2017 at the Syros International Film Festival in Greece. So I think now uh, the ideal for us is to share Anadine Jo 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 عشان ما يستجوا من رجدي قدار نرشو Yeah, as uh, so Philip was presenting this first part of the project and I have to say that uh, the whole process, the whole project have been a very, very inspiring and a reaching experience for us as artists, but also as human beings being in Malta at the residency, I mean, it goes so and working with the students and with the refugees have been very rich. Um, and actually, like uh, we, when we came back to Malta to show the, the film to the students and actually Anne was there, was a really, really nice moment and very, very moving for us. Um, so yeah, uh, this first film, so Under the Moon is part, I mean, is at the core of our uh, artistic practice as the Duo Nuscom production. So Philip was saying that at the beginning that uh, the Mediterranean as a social political space is very important for us in our reflection, uh, but also like the relationship between, um, between migration and identity. And I think Christina was also talking about the sense of belonging that is something that came up um, very in very important way in our in our practice, but also the um, 
the relationship between uh, personal and collective history and memory. Um, moreover, in the film, um, the, um, I mean, as in other work by Nuscon Production, uh, the role of imagination uh, and the role of playing and performing is very important. Um, in order to create and to open the new path for new possibilities and new paradigms. So uh, this is something that was very important in the film, but is part of our reflection. So as soon as, so after we finished this first video called Under the Moon, they just watch a small clip, um, our reflection, th those reflections continued for us in our minds and in our work. And we decided to, to go on and to like bring the film to a kind of other level in the sense that to kind of um, emancipate the film from like the direct connection with the residency. Um, also something else was that we wanted to explore and to, uh, to develop more was something that was like present but not that much in the first in the first version which is like the importance and the centrality of the Globigerina limestone in the Maltese identity. Um, Actually, when we arrived in Malta, like in Gozo, we landed in Malta, it was the spring 2017, I guess. And actually the Azure window have just collapsed some days before. So there was something that we were like really, we, we were exploring and filming and going on the, on the site, uh, but we were not really able to integrate and to melt it in the first version of the film. Um, so we wanted to, to bring it inside because it was something very crucial for our residency and our experience there. And something else that we wanted to explore more that is, was not that um, present in the first uh, version, even if it was there, was the own Maltese history of immigration. Because I, I guess the first version was more focused on the kids, like the children reenacting uh, the experience of the refugee, while we wanted also to, to talk about the idea of like the history of Malta as a place where people were going um, in other places in order like to, to, to find another, another life. So we came up with a different, with a new narrative um, and was the the narrative like with the, the character of a woman who was researching studying the the stone the globigerina limestone and while she was studying she was connected with the stone and connected also with the memories and the history that were hidden that were embodied in the in the stone in itself so we were able to come back to malta and i have to thanks Anne again here for her support and we shot new material for the film that we integrated in this new version that uh, came out in 2019, premiere in a film festival um, in Italy, in Torino, and um, we show in other venues, and we are glad to share with you this project today, um, yeah, even from far away physically, but connected by Zoom. So thank you so much for, for um, uh, listening and for being here. Left 
go back to your country and what you are doing here. And I told you. So I wanted to show you these three stones and if you can tell me about the difference between them. They're quite light, but this is, looks like Globigerina limestone to me, it has the same sort of texture. This is probably not, um, or else it has weathered in a specific way, which is quite unusual. 